Hey there, I'm a DIY track guy. This is my humble garage, and today we gently squeeze my crotch with this. This is a used OMP six point racing harness with eye bolt hardware and these backing plates. I bought these brand new a few years ago, but as of now, they're no longer valid for any sanctioned racing series, but they're fine for track day usage. The harnesses have mounting hardware that clip to the eye bolts and the eye bolts fasten to the chassis or these backing plates. First things first, let's get rid of this seat. And here we are at the hole for the anti-sub belts. Down there we need to mount two eye bolts at a zero to 20 degree angle and avoid drilling through the frame rail backing plate. And let's mark the position of this hole on the floor with a Sharpie. And here's the floor pan underneath the seat exposed. We wanna mount these eye bolts in line with this hole so that the sub belts come up straight. Around here and here so that the eye bolts can go as low as possible and hopefully not contact the bottom of the seat. The eye bolts bolt through the floor and into these plates and in the event of a collision, will prevent this plate from pulling through the floor. And before we start drilling, let's just make sure that there's nothing in the way down here. And the outboard plate will sit in this area here. The next step is we want to remove this factory bolt on the seatbelt buckle and replace it with this eye bolt. So this eye bolt's now tight and the seatbelt receiver is stuck in this position. The eye bolt doesn't have this step that allows the receiver to move slightly. Oh well. This guy. Now that we got this sorted, we can go ahead and install the lap belts. And finally, we need to install the shoulder belts through these holes in the seats here and attach them to this harness bar here. Ideally, the belt should have a straight shot from the harness bar to the shoulder belt holes in the seat. But due to the Miata's packaging constraints and these types of roll bars, we're gonna have to live with a little bit of misalignment for the outboard shoulder belt. Next, let's get this webbing wrapped around the harness bar properly. First up, make sure that this three bar adjuster is on the webbing. It passes through the front slot from under to over, and then the back slot from over to under. Next, let's take the strap and pass it underneath the harness bar. Make sure the webbing isn't twisted, and then let's pass it over the bar and into the rear slot from under to over. Position the adjuster as you'd prefer. Some people like it with a little bit of slack here like that. My preference is like this, tight to the harness bar. Now, again, take the end of the webbing, making sure that there's no twists. Pass it through the front slot from over to under. Then take the end of the webbing and push it through the rear slot only from over to under. This can be a little bit difficult. Just like that. Now, let's do the other one. All right, there we have it. The two shoulder belts are installed on the harness bar, nice and solid. But before we leave here, we have two things we need to do. First, it's not good that this can move around horizontally on the harness bar like this. 
They do sell collars that go on the bar here to prevent these from moving, but unfortunately I don't have them. As a temporary measure, I use these worm gear clamps and a bit of rubber hosing. And finally, with the excess webbing, let's roll this up. All right, I think this worked out nicely. The cam buckle is right at my hips. We don't want it up at stomach level. The lap belts can be adjusted easily on the sides of the seat. And the shoulder belt slider adjusters are right at my chest for easy access with enough excess webbing for me to loosen them or tighten them as necessary. All right, we're taking a quick drive around my neighborhood to see how these harnesses feel. And first impressions, I like them. And like I said before, I have used this harness and seat in another car, so I know what to expect and I'm not disappointed. It feels great. So we're all big kids here. I don't need to tell you that our seats and seat belts are an essential part of our vehicle safety systems. And depending on your local jurisdiction and the transportation laws, this may not be legal to change these up. It's a good thing that in my local jurisdiction, and finally, speaking about safety, in racing environments, a harness isn't the only piece of safety that we need to wear. We really should wear a Hans device, a head and neck restraint. Without one, in a collision, our body is fixed in the seat and our head and neck is actually free to snap forward, potentially giving us a horrendous neck injury or potentially death. So bear that in mind if you're thinking about using a harness on the street. But you already knew that, so with that, that's all from the Most Useless Garage. You're awesome, I'm useless, thanks for watching. All right, let me just turn this off.